All right, Josh Rubin here from East Coast Healing Performance, and today I want to talk about the adrenal glands in relation to the thyroid. You can't talk about the thyroid without talking about the adrenal glands, and you can't talk about the adrenal glands without talking about the thyroid. But first, don't forget to like this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and lastly, don't forget to hit that notification button so every week when we release a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. Now, here's the thing. These glands work together as a team, right? The adrenal glands regulate the availability of fuel, the availability of energy, the availability of minerals. Why? Because the thyroid regulates the burning of the fuel and the usage of the minerals. They work together, right? It's almost like if you didn't have wood and you have a lighter, you can't light a fire, right? So... The adrenal glands come online when we need help. This isn't bad. Cortisol isn't bad. Adrenaline isn't bad. The adrenal glands are not bad. We've been taught that they're bad and stress is bad for us, right? Stress, remember the work of Hans Selye. Stress helps us build resiliency. Without it, we become less resilient, right? So stress is good. The problem is when that stress which is the, man, the demands being placed in the organism exceed what, what the organism can handle, when that becomes chronic, now we have an issue, right? I've said it before. It's like hopping on a roller coaster, but never getting off. How would that feel? Minute after minute after minute, hour, day after day, it would feel horrible. That begins to take a toll on the system, and that begins to decrease our resiliency, our ability to you know, um, have fuel available, and affects the thyroid because now the thyroid is not going to have fuel to burn, right? So these adrenal glands come online to release cortisol, which is a gluco, glucose, glucocorticoid to bring energy in the system. But it can only be there for so long, right? Because when the tanks are empty and you bring this, these relief pitchers into the game, they're not meant to pitch an entire game. They're meant to pitch for one to two, maybe three innings. So we exhaust the very systems that are there to help us to adapt. So what happens? Where does this go wrong? Well, the first is there is cortisol, it's released as a negative feedback loop. So it's gonna essentially begin to slow the, the hypothalamus and pituitary down, which has a relationship with the thyroid HPT, but at the same time, it's going to begin to slow everything down. Digestion, our ability to be resilient, our blood pressure, our pulse, etc., And this is why you see people talking about adrenal fatigue in the sense of a bell curve where you go into stage one, two is the peak, and three is when everything begins to drop. You know, you go through that adrenaline spike and then all our reserves go down, right? Because of that negative feedback loop, right? So what happens is because that cortisol is there for so long and that negative feedback slows everything down. Now the thyroid doesn't have anything to burn, but it's also being told to slow down. Number two, thyroid hormone is kind of the gas pedal in our system, right? It plays a huge role affecting the 50 billion cells in our body, right? There's other things that play a role, but we're talking about thyroid hormone. So it's the gas pedal. The problem is when we are under chronic stress, what happens is the body is going to convert a lot of the, your T4, your inactive thyroid hormone, into reverse T3. That is like the break in the system. It's going to slow everything down. Once again, you're going to see the thyroid slow down. Why? Because now we don't have available fuel. Now think about it. When you see a lab and you see high reverse T3, this is a stress-driven person, a stress-driven lab result. This person does not need medication. This is not medical advice. I'm just saying talk to your doctor and say, what is happening here? I need to understand this more. Maybe I don't need this medication. Or do your own research and come to your own conclusions because it's your body and you have that right. But I can tell you that 90% of the time, putting medication aside, when you see high reverse T3, you know it's stress-induced. You know they need to change how they're living, change how they're eating, to change those lab results and get rid of that reverse T3 in a sense and convert that T4 into active form, 
you know, T3, free T3. The third reason is excess cortisol in the system, it is very simple, will affect T4 to T3 conversion. Active thyroid hormone, I'm sorry, inactive thyroid hormone to active thyroid hormone. That thyroid hormone is produced in the thyroid, right? Signaled by, you know, pieces of, you know, things in your brain, hypothalamus, pituitary signals the thyroid, you produce T4. It's carried through the blood, attached to a protein. That it's attached to a protein. It's brought to the liver. It's converted in the liver. It's converted in, in other periphery structures as well. But the problem is once the thyroid hormone gets there, it needs to be converted to or from T4 to T3, right? Inactive to active. If cortisol is excess, it's going to block that conversion. So now we have a conversion issue because of that chronic stress. Remember, you cannot talk about the thyroid without talking about the adrenal glands. And we feel this is why a lot of people are being misdiagnosed because we're saying low this, high that, high TSH, it's gotta be the thyroid. The problem is we're not looking at the person we're not looking at other structures. We're not looking at what's going on in their life. We're not looking at what's affecting the thyroid. Four, anytime there is chronic stress in the system and excess stress hormones being produced, you push yourself deeper into debt. You push yourself deeper into that inflammatory response. When that happens, you produce a lot of inflammatory compounds like interleukins and cytokines. The problem is, these inflammatory compounds affect thyroid receptor sites. So because of that chronic stress, because you're not meeting your metabolic needs, because the demands that are being placed in your system exceed what your system can handle, what happens now? All that inflammation and all that debt affect your thyroid receptors and make them less sensitive. What's the problem with this? The problem with this is you're taking medication to support your system, but your receptors are less sensitive because of the inflammation. So the medication doesn't do its job. You go to your doctor, they do a lab, you need to increase your dose. Same thing, you come back in a month or two, you need to increase your dose. And before you know it, you're on two or three grains and you feel like poop and it's not doing anything. Why? Because in order to create change, you have to change. How can we think that if A plus B plus C got us here to how we feel, and we go take a medication, but we haven't changed any of this. How can we expect any change? It's impossible. We have to reduce the stress in the system to decrease the inflammation, to free up the receptor sites. So the medication you're taking can actually work. And that's what our restoration thyroid nutrition program is all about. Lastly, anytime there's all excess cortisol produced in the system, because you're not meeting your metabolic needs, because there's stress on your adrenal glands, what happens is cortisol will cause your liver to produce a protein called metallothionine. Metallothionine binds copper, right? The problem is when you bind copper and you chelate it from the system, now we can't produce energy. Now the liver is not doing what it's supposed to do. So you begin to see a lot of systems actually not work how they're supposed to work. Now the problem with this is that energy production that you're not producing, you're not storing the minerals, you produce your body and you, you push your body deeper into an inflammatory state. The problem with this is as you go deeper into the state, your body's ability to detoxify recirculating estrogen, to detoxify recirculating toxins goes down, right? So you begin recirculating a lot of this estrogen that should be kind of pooped out or peed out from your system. Well, this estrogen, when it's being recycled, will cause thyroid binding globulin to go up. Thyroid binding globulin is a protein that binds thyroid hormone. The more it's bound to thyroid binding globulin, the less available to your system now. So you can see how chronic stress through this cycle or not meeting your needs, and stress on the system create the illusion of a thyroid problem, but there's really not a thyroid problem. The problem is how you're living and how you're eating and how you're not meeting your demands and then demands being placed on you is see what you can handle. So hopefully this YouTube makes sense. Hopefully it allows you to step back and go, hmm, I need to make some change. 
I need to make some change how I'm living and how I'm eating. I need to stop with the books, stop with the supplements, stop with the programs, stop searching for the best practitioner in the world because everything I need is right in front of me. And what I need to do is change. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out. Peace.